Yes, I'm here. No problem, Rashmi. Whenever you yes, want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll start the session within two to three minutes. Actually, students are still joining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let us let us wait for a few more students to join. Yes. No problem. Yes, yes, we'll we'll wait for a few more students, and after that, we can start. Yes, sir, we can start now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of Jharkhand Rai University, Rachi, I, Rashmi, co convener Institutions Innovation Council, welcome you all in the expert talk on the topic process of innovation development and technology readiness level and commercialization of the lab technologies and tech transfer. Today we have with us Dr. Kunar Shah as a resource person. Dr. Kunar Shah is a scientist who is also an entrepreneur with patents granted in USA, India and China focused on innovative natural, organic and herbal health supplements. He is the founder of Essenza Nutrition Private Limited. It is operational in 23 countries and is growing fast with a trusting base of over 5 million consumers. Government approved research lab and two US FDA approved manufacturing facilities. We welcome you, sir. With such a rich experience, we all are eager for your deliberation, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Rashmi. And uh, thank you, everyone else, for having me here. Uh, it's a very interesting topic that we have today. Uh, I'm sure a lot of students uh, would be, uh, you know, looking at an entrepreneurial journey, uh, wanting to start their careers with innovation or an invention and uh, trying to shape, uh, you know, their futures. I'm very, very glad to have here uh, myself here. And I see that we have about 122 participants, right? I would like to make this as interactive as possible. Um, I uh, so I would request the students to, you know, raise questions whenever they have any questions throughout the session. Uh, the more the questions, the better the session becomes, right? And um, uh, this is, uh, you know, I'm I'm not a speaker speaker, right? So I I can't take a class like of your teachers would teach you, right? So I'm going to tell you about my experiences as an entrepreneur, as an innovator. And then we are going to pick points and see how it can help you in your journey uh, in the days to come. Right. So uh, uh, thank you so much again, Rashmi, for having me here. Uh, let's start about uh, from how I became an innovator and, uh, about my journey. Right. So from very early ages, um, uh, from schooling days, I was always a curious mind. Right. And all kids are. Right? I believe that, you know, we are born humans all animals for that matter are born curious in nature right and curiosity helps us create the wonderful things that we have in the world today right so but what happens is in the in you know in our phase of growth and as we grow 
we somehow loosen that curiosity and we put ourselves in the standard framework uh, of uh, you know the educational system and uh, then we you know we just focus on one thing is getting one grade after the other and you know it, it somehow kills the curiosity and the kid in ourselves right so uh, i was always a curious a curious mind right and after my uh, education uh, i am an md in ayurveda so after i did my education i still wanted to do something um, innovative something that helps me raise this industry right something that can help my consumers something that can help my patients and not just uh, something that would um, uh, that everybody else was doing i didn't want to practice like everyone else so uh, 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 you know there was something that was uh, um, hinting me and we as uh, researchers right curious mind you know we read a lot of stuff and i'm sure you must be also reading a lot of stuff and i don't mean reading about uh, your favorite bollywood celebrities but reading about what's going on in the world who is researching what how are the research is coming up and what kind of information is flowing around right and today it's it's all on our fingertips all this information is available so readily to us so um, while i was keeping myself upgraded with a lot of things happening in my field which is more on the sides of science right so uh, uh, things happening in my industry so i was researching a lot on probiotics at that point of time so i was studying how are probiotics working and how does probiotics play a vital role and then i read something that blew my mind right something that says that probiotics you know when you are born when a child is born we have more probiotics in our body than the number of cells that we have right think about that for a second right we have more number of cells uh, probiotics in our body than the number of cells in our body and the day we die we have zero probiotics right so that that got me thinking that how are probiotics so crucial to our life right and i being a, a man of ayurveda so i am very passionate about ayurveda and the science behind herbs and herbal treatments right so then uh, you know i got fascinated by probiotics and then there was this herbal uh, uh, background and knowledge that i had the only scientific thing that made sense to me was researching how i could combine both of them that's how i you know it took us a lot of years but then we successfully combined probiotics with ayurveda we call it proyurveda right proyurveda is a globally patented technology okay? uh, we have patents in us we have patents in india we have patents in china and we have applied for a european patent also okay? so this technology what impact did it play right if if you know about ayurveda you know that ayurveda is beautiful it has it gives you very good results it cures your diseases from the root cause but it's a little bit slow for the modern lifestyle that we have and probiotics did exactly the same right probiotics helped me increase the efficacy and speed of the ayurvedic uh, medications so when i administered probiotics along with ayurveda what i could i got is products that were six times faster right six times faster than traditional ayurveda and this is all patent backed right so these are not just claims right and then there is an entire process that went behind getting me to combine probiotics with ayurveda right and uh, then successfully doing clinical trials making sure we get all these patents before we go to the market right but all innovation all inventions or all discoveries are fail until you can commercialize those right so some are good for us some are good for the world but it's all basically useless if you can't commercialize it right because today we live unfortunately we live in a world where um, money right or income or revenue has a very crucial role on the lives that we live so i had this beautiful concept i had this patents but until i could commercialize it right it was just you know a, a heavy burden of technology that i had so then 
we went through the process of marketing these products and today uh, successfully we are there in about 23 countries and about 300 crores in revenue and uh, spread across uh, so many continents right and we are more and more expanding at every stage of our life so uh, so that's briefly about me if you have if you want to contact me you can always contact me on my social media which starts with dr yurveda d r p r o y u r v e d a right that's how you can get in touch with me so uh, you know this was to give you a background of what kind of uh, stuff we have done right so let's let's start with uh, innovation right so when we talk about innovation we hear words like creativity idea process development vision growth inspiration right so these are some buzzwords that we hear around innovation but what actually is uh, innovation right when we talk about innovation or we talk about invention right so what's the difference between innovation and invention so as as the dictionary would say right an invention is a product of imagination right originated after a study or experiments and stuff like that so you know uh, if we go back to uh, the light bulb it, and we talk about edison edison failed thousand times before he invented right the light bulb so that's an invention it's pure imagination until you create something out of it right and what is innovation innovation is something that we do right it's an act of making changes to an existing product or a process by introducing new ways to do the same stuff right so you are you are changing some aspects of an already existing concept right and creating a, a new idea or a new it it can be a, it can be an object it can be a process it can be many things right so there are different aspects to it so you could be an innovator right uh, so you could do an innovation or you could do an invention right and you can commercialize both of them right so generally speaking right you could have a product that you have developed right it's an innovative product a product that is there but it's not solving all the uh, problems of the consumer today and you developed an absolutely new product like we did we built a new product from existing products right there are probiotic products that are live today uh, then there are Ayurvedic medicines that are there today, right? We combined both of them and increased the efficacy of the product, right? So it's a product per se. So my consumers now get products, safe products, right? No side effects and they can still get treatment at up to 6x speed rather than traditional Ayurvedic medicines, right? So you could do a product development or you could do a process development right where you are changing the process uh, in a way which uh, ensures that your um, consumers or your uh, whatever target audiences uh, has an improved version of whatever they used to have right or you could have an organizational innovation right where we change and there's continuous in improvement and development and then new solutions and we change an entire organizational approach right then there is service innovation right service innovation is in introduction of new services uh, introduction of a system which was not there and it could be very very disruptive in nature right zomato and swiggy uber ola they are all service innovations right we, we had taxi cabs earlier also we had uh, uh, restaurants delivering us food always but then they changed and disrupted the way the industry works and they are at, they are sitting at whatever valuation they're sitting today right and then you could have a business model innovation right where you know you develop newer models you develop newer uh, revenue streams and then you see and take your uh, idea or business uh, to the new levels right so our subject today talks of one it talks about uh, innovation development right so how do we develop an idea how do we develop innovation and then it also talks about technology readiness level right technology readiness level is something that uh, uh, nasa had brought in uh, uh, many many years ago and it is a very crucial part of um, uh, starting a startup or an invention it helps you track uh, what scale 
uh, are you there or uh, you know and it also kind of tells you um, what level have you reached in terms of your the stages and when can you actually commercialize and when can you start making money off the idea right so i would like to break the whole concept into four small parts right one is an idea right like we discussed right the first thing is we must have an idea it can be an absurd idea it can be an idea it can be a dream that turns into an idea it can be a need that can turn into an idea right so first is we need an idea right second is we need a prototype right third is validation of that prototype and the fourth is production right so four four small steps to from an idea to making money on the idea right so four small steps one is idea second is prototyping the idea third is validation and the fourth one is production right so until you have production there's no money in it right so let's break this idea into um, further steps right so uh, first is you just have a basic idea a raw idea right you you are sitting in a cafe and, or you are talking to your friends and then you get this crazy idea right you know how how about if we had you know this instead of this right and it, it has it's an unproven concept it has not been tested it has not been performed and there is no such product or concept or idea in the world today it's just a thought and it can be absolutely crazy right so what i do is whenever i have a crazy thought i note it down i put it in my diary right and then you know after i have collected a lot of ideas i go through them all one by one and then we see that uh, you know which ideas make sense and which are just just random thoughts right but it's important that you start jotting down all your ideas because that's some of those ideas are going to be brilliant and also when you start jotting down all your ideas and then you know second step to the ideation uh, section right is your basic research right so you have this idea you have a list of ideas that you have and then you start researching right it it may not have evidence right but it's just basic research on uh, you know you understand what do you want to do with the idea you know are there similar ideas in the market today uh, is there uh, you know you describe the need of the idea basically and when you do that you'll realize that a lot of ideas which you thought are very unique to you there are already products existing in some part of the world today similar ideas similar concepts similar products right so it's very crucial on um, understanding um, <clears throat> that we jot down a lot of ideas right because some of them are going to go right and then we do a basic research on this right then third, third step to the ideation part of our uh, uh, journey today is technology formulation right so concept and application has to be formulated right now you have you have this crazy idea you have done some research on this and now you are formulating it into you know whatever format you want to go forward in right so i call it technology formulation right so you now you make an application out of it or you formulate like half you know you want this idea to move forward what kind of product it it, it will be uh, what kind of uh, process or what kind of concept or what you know what how is it that you want it to be right when you reach the final step right then you need validation right and this is a very crucial part of it right you have great teachers you have great uh, find a mentor if possible there are lots and lots of um, um you know uh, agencies or uh, groups or uh, you know associations that are there today who help Uh, students or startups who are just starting right so find somebody who can give you a frank feedback right because feedback is very very essential part of the innovation journey right so find need you know we need that validation 
right so uh, you have an initial offering right uh, so you make a presentation on it that you know this is the idea and we have done basic research on this and we have formulated you know this is how it's going to be and this is all on paper right you have not put in any money on this right now you have not uh, 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 you know put in a lot of your time and efforts right now or your resources right now right so we validate our idea right why is a validation of idea required sometimes you know when we think of something we can be very 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 uh, affectionate about it right and then we forget it then, you know uh, this could be something practical or this could be uh, you know absolutely uh, you know a vague idea something that would not work into this practical world right so it's very crucial that we get validation on the idea that we have so once we get validation suppose you are going to a mentor who is already there in the industry and he says yes i think something like this will work right or you go to consumers who are using those kind of products right then you say yes they say that yeah we need something like that, right I'm sorry. There's a lot of uh, background noise. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, Rashmi. Hello. Yes, sir. Of, You're audible. I am audible, but there's a lot of background noise that's come in. Just a minute. Uh, Yeah, I think it's better now. Alright, oh, sorry for that. Okay, so let's go on. Um, so you can continue. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So you know, we we had these four, uh, you know, measures that we decided, right? Four segments: idea, prototype, validation, and then production, right? Idea, validate, idea, prototype, validation, and production. So, ideation step. The first uh, four was we have this basic idea. Then we do uh, research on this. Then there is technology formulation that we do, and then we get validation on it, right? Once we have validation on uh, the idea, uh, Rashmi, can you can you mute uh, uh, Rajan or? Yes, sir. Yes. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I okay. it it to me it seems so that he is speaking they are better now i think okay right so uh, the ideation segment uh, we got a validation on the idea right and now we feel that uh, okay uh, uh, you know, this is uh, this idea can work right so we go to our segment 2 prototyping right because now we have somebody who says this idea is actually going to work and we don't ask our friends we ask people who are going to be impacted by the idea so we ask stakeholders we ask uh, industry experts we ask mentors we ask professors or we ask consumers that's where we get our validation from our friends are going to say this idea is brilliant when it may not be so we talk to the right people right and when we have validation from there we want we move to our stage 2 stage 2 is prototyping right so prototyping that basically only two types of prototype one is small scale right lab scale as you would call it right and then there is large scale prototype right so when we do small scale is uh, let's say we are being making a pharmaceutical product then i would go to a laboratory and i would make a small scale product there right if you are making an engineering product you could go to your engineering cell in your college and use that environment and make a product there right uh, a lot of products uh, if you have 3d printers are now available there are uh, places where you can lease or rent or, or even just use it for one time you know you 3d print your small scale prototype or you physically make it right 
you can physically make a prototype if it's a product you know you use cardboard paper steel whatever and you make your first prototype right and usually right, usually we call this the ugly prototype right so small scale prototyping is don't look don't go for the best look right it's the best functionality uh, it's the best uh, physical appearance to the idea that you had right so this small scale prototype will help you understand the kind of challenges that you are going to face when you are going to make this product it also helps you reason with the validation that you got right so once you have the small scale prototype you can test it with consumers and see that, you know they like the idea of it but do they like the physical form of it right second stage so once we get good feedback on this we move to stage 2 this a large scale prototype right this is not a full commercial application yet this is just prototyping right so we go for a large scale prototyping right and uh, this is done in probably the exact environment that our commercial scale up uh, batches are going to be in right so let's say if you are making a uh, uh, let's say you are going to make this pen right and this pen is going to be be made in a manufacturing facility with automated machines scale prototype should be done on similar right why because large scale prototyping will tell you real world implications of making this product on a commercial batch right in on a small expense right so we are not investing heavily here but we are investing just enough time resources and money right to understand that this concept uh, this basic idea that we had who was been validated now who small scale did well in the industry can actually work right why do we take all this uh, steps is because we don't want to put in a lot of money and time on an idea that won't work in the industry right so when we have the large scale prototype ready we are done with second uh, segment right so we have done the idea we have done the prototyping right now we need validation right and this is this is very important validation right the earlier validation was just validation so that we don't go on the wrong track right now this is serious validation because oh, when we did prototyping we have put in our sweat we have put in our money we have put in our all our resources in this right and we are very serious for this now and by this time you would have put in anywhere between 2 to 5 years of your time right so pro, uh, pro, validation after prototyping is very crucial again we have two small steps here one is prototype system right so prototype system is you have this large scale prototype that you have created now you test this in the intended environment right close to the expected performance right so suppose uh, you have created you know when tesla created a car or when any automobile manufacturer creates a car right they have this large scale prototype you have seen this prototypes at a lot of exhibitions uh, that happen uh, you see this beautiful cars which never make it to the real world they are there in this expos right uh, automobile expos and they look very futuristic right so they are all large scale prototypes right now what they are doing is they put it in this expos because they are doing a prototype system right they are putting it in an environment where you know people come and see the products right now second is they will put it in a actual environment where the product is intended to be used right so if, if i am going to use my car on if it's an off roading car this car is going to go in an off road situation where we actually understand whether this is going to withstand that kind of pressure that kind of uh, conditions or not if i made a mobile phone which can withstand 60 degrees temperature i'm going to put it in a condition where it is 60 degree temperature right like when we make our products right and we were exporting to certain african countries right uh, the temperatures there are called zone zone 4b in terms of stability studies so we do, we do a stability study for the product where we have a small container right it's it looks like a refrigerator right but it's not really uh, uh we, wherein we put our products and the temperatures in there would go match the temperatures in africa right why because when i put my product in there for 6 months i will know whether my product will work in real life situation in africa 
Okay. So that's how we do a prototyping system, right? And then there is a demonstrating system where we are actually operating uh, at a pre-commercial level. So you must have seen products where, uh, you know, they say that we are pre-commercial, we are just sampling out. So this is like, we do a pra practical demonstration. We do samplings in real life situations. So we give out samples in the area, in the place where we intend people to use this product or concept, right? So that's, so when we get positive feedback on this, our validation is done. Means our idea was done, our prototyping is done, our validation is done. If we have this, more or less we are through, right? This idea is going to work. This concept is going to work, right? And now we have a product from, from a basic idea, we have a product, right? Or um, then we go to the stage four and stage four is production, right? So one is it can be first of a kind commercial system, right? Because now we are getting into commercials. We are getting into production cycles. We are getting, so, you know, all the technical processes and systems to support this commercial activity are, should be in a ready state, right? And once we get positive feedback there, we go into a full commercial application, right? And full commercial application is we build it or we make it in the same facility that we are going to. Uh, build the final product, right? So this entire stages can also be uh, measured on a TRL level. Right? So TRL level is the technology readiness level that we discussed earlier, right? So TRL level starts from level one to level nine, right? And so uh, let's, so be, because NASA built this, let's talk about uh, from their perspective, right? So TRL one is, you know, basic technology research, right? So basic principles, whether they are uh, observed and they are reported. When they are TRL2, technology concept is, an application is formulated. Like TRL3, experimental of critical functions is done. You know, it's like a proof of concept. TRL4, we have components and validation in, term, in a laboratory environment. TRL5, we have a validation in relevant environment. Right. So just as we discussed, TRL six is we have the system or, or you know prototype demonstration in a relevant environment. So a proper uh, model, right? Like we discussed that if it's an off-roading car, it goes to off-roading conditions. Like our products went to real life situations with 55, 60 degrees temperature, right? TRL eight, right? Actual systems with. Uh, you know, qualified uh, demonstration, right? So in terms of if it would be a NASA product, it would be a flight qualified uh, uh, rocket, right? And then TRL-9, it's a proven mission. So proven uh, concept. Uh, in NASA terms, it would be flight proven, right? So when we reach TRL-9, right, we are okay to launch, right? We are, we are commercial, we are pre-commercial or we are commercial in the sense that this little idea that we had is on a um, commercial level. And now you can sell your product and make revenue. Out of it. So while we talk about TRL, right, a lot of people miss this. And I would like to emphasize on uh, MRL, right? So market readiness level, right? So, you know, technology wise, we are ready. But market wise, are we ready, right? When we launched a product, uh, the Proyurveda concept, Right. In India, uh, in 2014, right, we we were TRL level, we were ready. MRL level, we were not ready. Right. India was not ready to have a product of that kind at that point of time. Our consumers were not mature enough. Right. So my product failed in India. Right. Uh, but it succeeded across the world. So we did great business in US, Canada. European countries, African countries, Southeast Asian countries, uh, Russian countries, so entire CIS belt, entire MENA belt, the Gulf belt, right? So we did great numbers everywhere else than in India, right? Uh, 2018, we did an MRL study again for our products in India and Indian market was starting to mature then, right? So 2018 onwards, we relaunched our products in India and now they are doing well in India too, right? So. ERL level, so you have your product, concept, everything, it's ready to go, 
right now let's measure your market readiness level right so here we have you know couple of things that we look after so first is your problem solution right so does the problem exist right can we solve it are we improving this uh, towards the solution or are we creating something new right so i call it the problem solution fit so we look into that first right for com this is for commercials right because like i said we live in a world where money matters right and any in invention is you know fade to a certain extent if we can't make money on it right so again four steps to this to measure your market readiness level right first one problem solution fit right if there is a problem but is it a substantial problem that needs to be solved right a lot of times uh, and i have seen a lot of products fail because of this because a lot of times we feel that there is a problem right and then you feel we create a trl and we find a beautiful product uh, but the market is not ready to accept it because the mark consumers don't look at it as a problem right i'm sure if you guys are watching a uh, uh, shark tank on sony right now you, you must have seen products which are which look really funny uh, because um, they feel they felt that the product will do great and there is a problem but is the problem really a problem that consumers want it to be solved right is something they didn't answer right so we go to the second part of it so we we see the problem and the solution fit and we understand that you know this is how it's going to be then we go to the second part of it is the vision team fit right so you have this kind of vision right but do you have the right team to solve the problem right without a team all hard work is fail right right it won't work if you have the right vision and you have the right team for the right vision right and team could be you your partners or your employees it can be every stakeholder in the organization so create a vision and see attach people who have the same vision for that industry for that product as you right then we do the product and market fit right so is my product desirable is it the, is this the right target uh, market for my product or my service right we ask those kind of questions and we see that you know sometimes a product that you build may not do well in india but it will do amazingly well in let's say uh, japan right so you have to see what is your product and market fix right so see the product and ask questions like which market will who, who which type of consumers will like this product right is my product really desirable by this mass by particular class of people right then we do a market and business model fit right do we understand the model for exploitation and sustainability right we ask those kind of questions right and if the market and your business model right they fit well like a jigsaw puzzle then your products are going to do well right so until then until we have the problem and solution fit the vision and the team fit the product and the market fit and the market and the business model fit right if your business model doesn't fit in the market gone right if your product and the markets doesn't align you are gone if your vision and your team doesn't align you are gone and if your problem and your solution doesn't align you are gone right so we look at all these parameters and make sure a product which is technologically ready is also market ready right and when we have this market ready product right that's when we have a product which can be sold right so uh, you know that's more or less about it uh, let's talk about uh, tech transfer yeah. right so um, you know we had this idea it's ready as per trl we did an mrl and it's ready as per market also there are two steps to this okay one is technology transfer pure technology transfer right you have you you are a 
passionate product creator you are an innovator you don't want to do the marketing of these products you don't want to sell these products but you want to sell the whole idea of whatever you have created right so you did the you did the invention you probably patented it you do the disclosure right you do the assessment right and after the assessment you do the protection of your idea because protection is very crucial if, especially if it's a very innovative idea right then you do marketing for the idea and not for the product right you find the right partner for it right then you do a licensing deal with them right or a tech transfer deal with them right a licensing deal can have uh, probably royalty attached to it a tax transfer deal can have uh, full fees attached to it right so we see what kind of financial return we get right and that's our technology transfer is done right and uh, the other way would be again invention right you uh, do the disclosure you do the uh, innovation report you evaluate you do your protection so you do your non disclosure agreements with whomsoever you are sharing this idea with you file for a patent and get your patent and then you have two uh, paths right your first path would be finding a partner for the innovation right so you find a partner uh, partner in the market right uh, so you go to that market you find a partner you do a license deal with them they commercialize the product you earn in royalty and you make your money on it right and probably you have some upfront payment also right second is and this is a very innovation a uh, very common thing people going for right now is you form a startup right so you have all the steps but instead of finding a partner you go and form a startup that's where your team is crucial right so then you do a product launch you do uh, you go to you know if you need funding you go to banks or you go to venture capitalist for funds right and then you make revenue on it right so then you make money on on the product right so um these are probably the basic basic uh, things that you need to keep in mind while you know you are going for innovation development and while uh, uh, you go through the entire phase from an idea to commercially being viable also very crucial is that you be sustainable right sustainability is a big thing today and uh, you have to be you know self sustainable in terms of the idea in general right and uh, yeah so one uh, last thing i would like to say is don't be afraid to uh, try to fail but make sure you analyze and find the root cause of your failure every time you fail improve on that and then you again try fail improve try fail improve and you do this until you make it right so that's my time i'm dr kunal shah from essence and nutrition that's my company's name you can find me on social media on dr proyurveda Uh, it's great talking to you and uh, if you have any questions please shoot yes yeah, students students if you have any questions you can hello hello am i audible hello 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 yeah rashmi you are audible yes yes students you can put your questions in the chat box we can take the questions one by one
Yes, sir. This, uh, the session was very well covered, sir. And uh, with all your, I mean, you you had your experience from your school days. We were talked about the probiotics with Ayurveda. It is actually a very good combination. And you also talked about the innovation, creativity, product development, and the process development, and related to organizational innovation or service innovation. It was definitely a very good. Very good session. Uh, uh, actually, if you have some questions, we'll be uh, we'll be asking you through mail also. And uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the student, the feedback link will be shared in the chat box. Uh, where you can fill the feedback form. Thank you, sir, for sharing us with your deep knowledge regarding patenting and other relevant in information. It is definitely going to be beneficial for all of us. The session was quite enriching with innovative ideas and startups. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Students are requested to kindly fill the feedback form. The feedback link is shared in the chat box. Students, kindly fill the feedback form. Students, students do fill the feedback form.
Zero que vai conseguir saber que vai ficar. Como? Zero que vai ficar. Zero que vai ficar. Zero que vai ficar. Thank <laughs> you. 